so the first thing we want to do when um, doing textures. So the first thing I did, I changed, uh, there's like a bunch of tabs up here. Layout was like the default one. There's like modeling, which is basically the same thing. Sculpting, there's a, so there's a tool that you could use that could add, a, you could like smooth things out or add like textures. But since we already pretty much modeled our entire uh, monstrosity, well, this looks even more of a monstrosity. We're gonna keep it like this. Um, I mean, you could use a tool if you want, it could make things easier, but I'm not going to get too much into it. Uh, so now I'm going on UV editing, which is what we want. And basically UV ed editing is a tool for us to, um, basically unwrap all of this model. And like, basically if this was a an animal, we'd like skin it. And, and stretch the skin so that we could paint on it. That sounds very morbid, but it's pretty accurate. Yeah, we're gonna skin our shark. And the first thing to do is we're gonna go in edit mode. And if you remember to go in edit mode, we press tab, tab in and tab out. And uh, we're gonna start unwrapping. Okay, so so to start unwrapping, uh, we want to kind of uh, separate the, each piece. So let's say we start, I guess we could start with the shark itself, like the, the body. Um, use the button Alt left click to, uh, if you remember from last Twitch stream, uh, loop around the entire well, yeah, do a loop with all the connecting edges. And once you do that, we press Control E, which uh, gives us a bunch of edge options. Right now we want to use Mark Seam. So basically it's just marking where we want to cut or like uh, start skinning our shark. <laughs> this is where we're going to do our first cut. Um, and then, so we want to add mark seams in places that are uh, more highly detailed. A good example is this mouth. Because uh, if we don't mark the seams here, it won't um, unwrap properly. I'll show you. So let's say we only have this, this seam as marked for now. If I want to unwrap and uh, skin our monster using U, the first option is called unwrap. If I click this, oh, I'm sorry. I have to select everything first. If I press unwrap, this is what we get. Obviously, this is not easy to work with. Like, I can't, I don't know what's going on. There's like squares overlapping other squares. I don't really know what the hell I'm looking at right now. So that's why we want to uh, mark places that are very highly detailed because things like this will happen. We want to like cut our shark into small pieces. And uh, to do that, I'm gonna start here and then you just select the edges or points that would make the most logical sense to separate this mouth area from the rest. This, what I've marked here will only, it separates the inner mouth and the outer body, if that makes any sense. So then as I did before, I'll press Control E and then mark seam, and there you go. So that is done. Uh, so the eyes are a pretty good example as well. If we just unwrapped an eye, this is what we would get. This looks simple, but 
it doesn't really it's not very representative of an eyeball um it doesn't remain it doesn't um keep its shape it doesn't if i look at this i don't really know what that this is the eyeball so to fix that whoa i really hate my mouse it's not uh, i need a new mouse so um since the eyeball is kind of going inside of our shark, I'm just going to go on the wire. Uh, what is it called? Wire map? Wireframe. Okay. Uh, so I'm just go going to cut the eyeball into half. Like that. You don't need to do the whole thing. Just enough so that if you cut it, you would be able to spread it, uh, like flatten it. Like, imagine this eyeball was an orange. If you peeled an orange with a, or like cut a side of an orange, um, you would be able to flatten the, uh, the skin of the orange flat on a table if you just cut this side of the eyeball. So you don't have to do the entire you don't have to cut uh, the entire eyeball and the reason why I wouldn't want to do that is because um, it would look it looks better to paint the side of the eyeball that has less cuts if it remains smooth and there's no cuts between it it will paint properly you could use smart UV project which will automatically unwrap and skin our monster uh, the way it would think to do it but there's so many different pieces that it might be confusing to know which which part belongs to what like if I just look at this shape I, I have no idea what this represents so it's a lot better to mark the seams yourself so that the end product of your unwrap will be very distinct and you'll be able to recognize the shapes which is why this is an important step which any person doing modeling should do once i'm done unwrapping each part each main um part of this uh model it will unwrap into separate islands these are called islands by the way these uh, sections, it'll, it'll separate into islands like this, but in a lot clearer way and less many, like, I don't know, like, <laughs> there's two, there's, there's so many different pieces that it, it, it's kind of clustering, you know? So if I unwrap myself, it, there won't be as many. There you go. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just gonna go back to finishing and uh, wrapping this thing. I'm gonna go to this um, this fin. So this fin is pretty easy. You just uh, wanna mark a seam all the way around it. There's a dot here that's really hard to see, but if you I'm gonna zoom in, there we go. So you just selecting the fin and then control E mark seam. Uh, the wing. Oh, since uh, the the fin is two dimensional, there's two sides to it. You also want to unwrap the middle. So to do that, I could Alt. I could do Alt uh, select, and I don't want these. So to get rid of them, I'm just gonna go C. In the select mode and middle mouse button that deselects things in an easy way. Be careful, like uh, for edges that may be hidden behind other uh, parts of the body. Anyways, so it looks like we have, yeah. So we we just want half of this fin to be selected. So that when we cut it, it will have both sides.
Mm, the same thing will happen for this wing. Actually, a wing, all you have to do is cut it in half. And to do that, just do select the, the loop. It's kind of hard to see, eh? but I know what I'm doing. There you go. So I just selected a loop. It doesn't really matter which one you choose as long as it goes all the way around the wing. Uh, and mark that as a seam. For the legs, um, I'm just gonna do pretty much what I did for the eyes. I'm just gonna do one side. Ugh, this mouse. This mouse wheel is completely broken. So I'm just gonna select like maybe the back side of the leg, the booty. I'm gonna peel it like an orange. A very muscular leg piece of orange. Okay, so I have the entire back side of the leg. Whoop, whoop. I think. Yeah. Okay. And then I'm gonna mark that as a seam. And um, I just want to see something real quick. Oh, this is a good, a cool trick. Uh, if you have parts of the body that are obscuring your vision, just press if press select the part of the body with L, and you could press H to hide it. So there you go. Oh, I hid the back of the leg because they were all selected, but. Um, like here, if I select this and I press H, as you can see, uh, it hit it and you could, uh, unhide it using alt H. That was pure memory. I'm pretty proud of myself for remembering that. Okay. And I'm going to select this little circle at the base of the leg and, uh, mark seam. Okay. And for the foot. Um, I'm just gonna separate the top and the bottom of the foot. Okay, you want to avoid this because uh, this will actually select this edge and this edge at the same time, which is not what we want. Because if I do this, this is what's gonna happen. It'll mark a seam between the toes and I don't want that. If you accidentally mark a seam, just uh, select the edge that you marked the seam and uh, press clear seam. And there you go, mark seam. Okay, so that's the base of the foot. All right, so I think we're done. Those are all of the pieces. Oh, actually there's one piece that I forgot that we absolutely don't want to forget is the inner eyeball if you're oh so I'm just gonna do the same thing I'm gonna select a half of it and peel it like an orange uh, mark seam and there you go uh, and then Alt H to show the eyeball again. Okay, so I think we got all of the pieces and now we're ready to unwrap. When you unwrap, you gotta make sure to select everything using A, like that. And then you press U and then you do unwrap. And there you go, as you can see, the UV map is a lot simpler than it was before. And we could actually distinguish which parts belongs to what. So this is obviously the body. Uh, this is the uh, skinned leg because of the voluptuous circle at the end. Uh, this looks like to be the foot because there's five toes. And these are the, the wings and the fins and there's the base of the foot and these are the two eyeballs. So obviously like 
I feel like we're using, there's like a lot of uh, wasted space here. So if you want to move things around. Okay, so what you do is not select this thing, but you select your entire model. So you will have every uh, island displayed. Okay, so what I want to do is just move things around. Uh, so you press G, you select an island. When you press G, you can move it to the side. I'm going to select all of these ones. And I'm going to move them in the corner over here. And maybe separate them a little bit from each other. So this part is going to be most of the detail. We want this to be a little bit bigger. Could scale it up a little bit. So we have all of our pieces together. Why is there a hole in that one? Which hole? Oh, there is a hole. What the hell? Um, we could actually see. So the, the way to see is, this is what this tool is for. So if I select this part, it will show it on the model without it all being selected. I don't know why it produced a hole. That is very mysterious. Oh look, if I select it, it, it shows up. Oh yeah, I have maybe I have to check my, my uh, normals. How do I check my normals, purple, do you know? Uh, select all, shift and N. Do I do this? Am I doing the right thing? <laughs> um, if, we'll see. Maybe, maybe I won't. Maybe it's just a glitch or something. I don't know. Let's just proceed and, uh, if it's if it causes a huge problem, I'll look into it. But I just want to move on for now. Hey guys, I just wanted to do a small side note regarding the normals. So uh, in the video, you with the shark, you won't be able to see like uh, like as you, in the UV map we saw like there was like a an, a hole, but we on the model itself we weren't able to actually see the uh, normal being inversed. And uh, I just wanted to show you a quick way that you could look at where, which direction the normals are facing. And to do that, uh, all you have to do is go on your model and go on edit mode. And uh, here where there's like two circles, uh, you just click the arrow and then here there's a option normals. And you could uh, click uh, like the third option here. And as you can see, it'll like show little uh, blue uh, lines facing, well, going in the direction of uh, each face, which represents normal of each face. Um, so in the video, uh, I accidentally did something. I, uh, I did shift N and I did recalculate normals and then I pressed inside. Like if I press inside, as you can see, the normal uh, disappeared. And the reason for that is because if I zoom in here onto the cube, the normal is actually facing inside as opposed to outside of the cube, which is not what we want. We want we want all of the normals to be facing out, outwards. So um, what you would do is uh, you would, if, if this happens, uh, just select everything and then as we did before, do shift N and that will recalculate all the normals so that they're facing outwards. Uh, another way of uh, actually fixing this problem, so let's say I uh, inverse this normal again. I shift N and then I put it inside. We could go on mesh here option and normals. And uh, for the face that you selected, you could do flip. And there you go, it fixed the problem as well. All right, so the next step is we want to start painting. So 
Oh, a good word of advice also is um, make sure to save your um, your model every once in a while just to save your progress because if you lose all your information, you're going to have to start from zero and that's pretty annoying. Okay, so I just opened another tab using the plus at the top right and um, we're going to go on... We're going to have one that's a shader editor. And then we're going to use this one at the bottom for our textures. Oh, <laughs> I know why it's not working. It's because I am in edit mode and I want to go into texture paint mode. There you go. So, um, there you go. We have a purple shark. And what we want to do is add a material to this shark. And as you can see, there's uh, two little nodes here that appeared. Principle B D B S D F, which basically has all of the different um, options that you could add to your model, like uh, metallicity, uh, subsurface, specular data, um, roughness, and yada yada yada. Um, and this is the the output. So we're gonna start uh, in this UV. Is this called a UV editor? No, it's a shader editor. So we want to add something called an image texture. This is basically the uh, diffuse color of our shark. The, the base color that we want to add to it. And we're going to connect this to base color. Um, here we would add the picture that we want to project onto our model, but since we're going to do it ourselves, we're going to go here and the, right now this is the, uh, texture, no, we're in a UV editor. I hate that they use almost exactly the same icons for UV editor and texture node editor, but nonetheless, we're going to make a new image and we're going to call it shark uh, diffuse. Diffuse just means like uh, the base color. And here we could add uh, our resolution. I'm going to just uh, multiply it by two and uh, just to make it a little bit more detailed. And here, this is the background color that you want. I'm just going to keep it to black. Um, and everything else seems to be okay. You press okay. And here we have our UV map on top of a black image. So now it's time to ask you guys what you guys want as for pictures. Oh, and before moving on, um, I have to open, you open the file that you just created and uh, I don't know where I saved it. I think in here. Textures. I called it. Oh, I didn't save it yet. So you go here. Uh, save as. You save it where you want. I'm going to put in textures. Shark diffuse. And now we could open it. Textures. Shark diffuse, and there we go, we have a black shark now. If you want, you could start painting your model directly on top, but obviously there's a few issues with that. It's not very precise. You're in UV editor, change it to image editor. I thought they were different. But that, I have no tools. <laughs> I can't do anything. <laughs> Oh, there you go. <laughs> you have to change. Okay, so this is view. You want to go and paint. Okay. Thank you very much. I don't know what I would do without you. Okay, so the first... There's different options for 
brushing so there's like drawing which just uh, draws then we have softening which does something uh, I'm assuming it softens the, <laughs> the drawing we have smear which just kind of drags the colors around uh, and we have fill which we all know what that does right now we're just gonna stick with uh, paint um, so I guess uh, one way of painting if you guys want is you could directly paint on uh, Photoshop or any other painting um, tool that you might have. I could I could modify it directly here, uh, but I can't see the shapes, the UV shapes that I had. Which is not very useful, because if I draw it directly here, um, I won't be sure if I'm drawing at the right place. Um, I guess a way of getting around that is um, having layers. You can export UV in the UV editor. E oh, edit mode on your model. Let's see if that works. UV, export UV layout. Aha! There we go. Whatever, it's gonna be called cube. And all right, try again. Cube. Aha, there you go. So I could use this, select everything. And you could add it here and you could edit it. Edit your image on paint because Blender doesn't have like high tech tools to work with. Although paint.net doesn't either. And I do not have power, uh, Photoshop because I'm just, uh, I'm not a real artist. <laughs> so there you go. You could start editing your image here and then saving it. And then uh, it will uh, translate back into the model here. Uh, but me personally, I like working on Blender directly because I could see the changes directly onto the model and I could see if I like it or not instantly. So I'll just go back to image editor. Uh, here you could select the different uh, paintings that you had. I'm gonna go back to Shark Diffuse. Um, I guess I'm gonna start painting. Um, so I guess I could start with like a basic shark color for the body. And you guys let me know if you have some amazing ideas that pop up in your head. Oh, uh, and by the way, there's brush settings here. So uh, if, if you want to make the brush bigger, you could uh, change the size. Um, I think there's a way of scaling it faster than that. I'm pretty sure there's a hotkey. I forgot it years ago. It doesn't really matter. Give the shark a flame on the side. I like like it was need for speed. Yeah, I, I guess I could do that. I'll do that on paint though. Because uh, you could like uh, use like picture images on Google images. So like you see the reason why I like painting directly is because I could see the result already and I don't have to worry about anything. It's pretty cute. I like it. Oh, you could uh, select the color with S, by the way. I think what I'm gonna do is save this real quick. and apply to mirror so that painting is a little easier when going in between. And hello. What? What? What, what the fuck? <laughs> Uh, 
I have no idea why it's doing this. Um, usually this doesn't happen. I think it's because I applied the mirror. Maybe I would have, I should have, um, unwrapped with the mirror. So I'm gonna unwrap again. I think it makes more sense if I do this. But now I have both sides, so beware. I'm just gonna move these around again. So we go back on uh, UV Editor. I'm gonna go back into, uh, what was it, image editor. I'm going to use the fill tool and completely start from scratch. Um, here, so the reason why um, splitting all the way across is not wasn't maybe not the best idea is because let's say uh, I paint one side one color. Um, like here, you'll you'll see the uh, the seam like really really easily. You'll uh, you'll see the difference. So there's probably other ways I should have uh, cut it better. But I mean, I mean, you could you could just also be careful, like uh, make sure to. Uh... Okay, well, I thought this was gonna solve the problem with the weird um, what the hell is going on here, but it's not. So I don't know. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> um. Well, let's just improvise, I guess, at this point. I think it was a good idea for me to have applied the mirror uh, modifier because if I wouldn't have and left the UV as only halves, maybe in the future if I did apply the mirror, the UVs that I drew here wouldn't uh, work anymore with like the the entire model like as one. So I think it, it's good practice to apply the mirror before doing any texture editing. I should have separated these islands a little bit better because look at them, they're like so close together that if I accidentally paint on top of it, it'll, it might show up onto the these like separate models. So make sure to separate your islands.
Oh, we should put like a, a swimming costume, like Speedos. What do you guys have that? What do you guys think of that? Look at that. <laughs> Wait, if I put this, let's like put more high definition. Oh, wow. So this kind of looks kind of sharp. I don't really like how that looks. So I'm just going to smooth it out a little bit. Oh my god, are you kidding me? Maybe it's because the normals... Because I checked flip earlier. <sighs> control, shift. Control, shift, N. Okay. Now unwrap. And go on to... UV editor, and we're gonna reposition reposition them, these again. Uh, hopefully, this worked. Um. Let's see if I paint there. It's painting where it should be. So, you were right, purple. Thank you. It's because I selected the uh, invert, inverse thing for the normals. Uh, so don't do that, anyone. Good to learn. Okay. So I was saying that the mouth here, I thought it was kind of... The edges were a little bit strong, so I just want to, like... Uh, Smooth it out a little bit. Why can I not see the rest of the UV map? Why? Is there a way for you to select a part of the model so you can draw without being scared of getting other parts? Oh yes, ah, that's a good uh, question. Thank you. Um, if you go, um, like this, no. Oh, now they show. Did you just see that? Like, okay. Um, <laughs> how do I select like a body part? Usually I would go like in edit mode or some, oh, 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 oh. There you go, I think I found it. So I went in edit mode and it kind of, and I selected what I did, I went to edit mode, I selected a point, and reverted back to texture mo mode, and I got to it. And now once I'm here, I could select parts. So it wasn't really shown properly in the tutorial, but the way to select different faces that you would want to focus coloring on is by... Uh, when you're in texture paint mode, you there's like a little box here uh, with two squares. You just press that button. 
and then it will become kind of like a there will have like a white shade on top uh, I guess not everywhere but uh, that's beside the fact basically this uh, allows you to select different uh, parts of your model that you would want to focus painting on and like right here I just press C to select you could also use B to select multiple things and uh, you basically select the different parts of the model that you'd really want to paint on and when you paint on this maybe I should do, choose another color um, so here, here I'll use pink so when I paint here it will only paint on the parts that I've chosen and if you want to deselect you could always uh, use C and then use middle mouse button like that and then um, right click to cancel and then if you want to continue painting in different parts it will do the same thing it will just focus where you want to paint All right, let's put them flames. So I'm going to save this image. Uh, save image. And I'm going to open our shark image. Then we go on Google. And we look for flames. And for some reason, the hockey team shows up as the first result, which is interesting. There's, this is a real one. I could tell because it's black. <sighs> okay, yeah, there, that's what we wanted. And I guess I could just make it go through the entire thing like that. And then we save it. And save it as a PNG, and you replace it, and flatten. Uh, open. There you go. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> this is horrible. <laughs> I'm just gonna leave it to that. Um, also, I'm... I just thought about it. Maybe I should add a little bit of uh, detail onto the shark itself. So once we're done with that, uh, I guess the next thing we could do is um, texture mapping, uh, normal maps. But, I mean, I'm going to try to show you guys how to do normal maps, but uh, I got to tell you, I've had a hard time with that. Uh, so add bump. That's what I thought. You uh, put color to height, and then you open. Um, so I had I had this image that was showing shark normal. Basically, I just found uh, scratched metal online, and uh, I'm hoping that could be used for this. Um, so. It was in textures, and I called it shark normal. I'm just going to hide this, 
and I think the only way for me to see if it worked is to there you go it did work okay so uh, this is rendered mode by the way this is what it would look like when uh, all of these uh, so the diffuse and the normal are both applied to the model at the same time. It's kind of dark, so I should probably add a light to the scene. So you could add a light by uh, and the same option. You do uh, shift A and the same options where you could find like adding circles and things. There's lights and you could use maybe like a, a sun and uh, put it all the way up there. And there you go, we could actually see the textures. These textures seem pretty uh, aggressive. I'm gonna go back to... Where where did my nose go? Ah. Okay, yeah, it's because I wasn't selecting my thing. So, um... Here in strength, you could reduce it. And uh, you could see the changes here. We don't want it too strong. Just gonna reduce it significantly. Uh, so here the eyeballs seem to have applied also the texture. We don't really want that. So I'm going to go, I'm gonna open um, our shark normal and Go back to texture node. No, that's not the thing. Image editor. And we're going to select everything. And also be confused to why our UV is not showing up anymore. Is it because we're not in texture mode? Ah, uh, there you go. That's the reason. Okay. So I'm going to. I'm just gonna find the eyes here. It's kind of hard to see, but um, if they're black, they're gonna remain smooth. Uh, why is the color not working? Well, I'm sorry uh, about the the textures here. I mean, at least we got it working, but unfortunately I can't draw any more on this thing, which is not very useful. Uh, thank you for uh, keeping me company and listening, and I hope you guys learned something. The purpose of these tutorials is not really to be, to go too much in depth into every single aspect of Blender, because as you can see, there's so many things to learn and it goes forever. I could like spend years just, explaining and discovering new things uh, but uh, for the purpose of maybe maybe making simple models for games you want to at least have a way to have colors on your models and this is how i hope you enjoyed see you next time bye bye